When was the production for California Christmas? So we started filming, um, I'm trying to remember the exact date, but it was in July. Of 2020? Uh, uh, July of 2020, yeah. Oh, okay. So it was a very quick turnaround from filming to <laughs> release. Um, uh, it was, it was uh, we were working 24-7 to try and get it uh, finished through post and delivered. Because we had to deliver in, I think, late October um, was, was the requirement for delivery if it was going to air in, in December. So um, uh, it was a very, very fast turnaround. So, but yeah, we started filming in, in January and uh, of course we had to get um, everything approved through SAG and all of that with the COVID protocols and, and, and all of that. And assuming it was filmed in California, correct? Yes, okay. it was filmed in California, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah what in, were the protocols? Oh, sorry. Oh yeah, I was just gonna say up in Northern California, Petaluma and oh, nice. Sonoma and those surrounding areas is where beautiful. we filmed. Mm. It was beautiful. I felt so lucky and blessed that number one, I was getting to work during this time, because there's so many people who can't work. Um, uh, and that was certainly the case before I got to film this. I hadn't been able to do any physical production, obviously for months and months. Oh really, sorry to interrupt, but you sat, you were at home probably? Yeah, I was able to do some other work and I had post work to do and things like that. So uh, I still was keeping myself busy, but um, yeah, not, not going and physically filming anything. Um, so I felt very lucky to be able to do that. and. Yes, we had to have a very extensive plan. Number one, just to show to SAG, and Dan Daniel Aspermonte, who was one of the producers on it, he put together this very detailed, highly detailed plan of how we would shoot it, how we would keep everybody safe, and uh, a very impressive uh, plan that he put together. And uh, because the movie is a little bit more self-contained, it focuses on these two actors who happen to be married in real life, that helped with, you know, certainly getting things approved when they got approved because we were, uh, like I mentioned before, one of the first features to, to, to film um, uh, since this whole thing kind of started, since, you know, shutdowns happened. And so, um, uh, but yeah, it was very interesting. It was a whole different world uh, as far as filming goes um, with the COVID protocols. Number one, we were tested like every other day. Um, on set? The, on set, the good wow. old nose swabs. Wow. And uh, we had more medics on set. Um, uh, and also, uh, we we're temperature checked. When we arrived, we were temperature checked before we left every night. Um, just you know, highly diligent. We wore face masks, of course. Um, if we were in close proximity with the actors, we'd also have the shields. So we'd have mask and shield on. Uh, and to that effect, nobody was really allowed to go get close to the actors while they were on set, other than the camera, the, the camera operators and or DP and myself, the director. And maybe the AD, first AD, um, uh, were really the only people that could get in close proximity with the actors when they didn't have their masks on. So we had to follow those rules. Um, there was also zones. So uh, you know, only a certain amount of people total could be in any zone at one given time. So obviously set itself or base camp would be the hottest zone. That's where the most people would be. But we tried to keep that all separate. And on top of all of this, we had a uh, COVID officer. So we had somebody on set who was overseeing this stuff and making sure we were keeping socially distant um, and that we were, had our masks up that they don't fall down over our nose. And you know, you got a bunch of people with their noses out. He was, he's on it. Uh, Matt, wonderful gentleman who was our COVID officer. Um, he was overseeing all of that and making sure uh, that we were following all the rules. And um, and he actually did it in a very pleasant way. It's not like he was like, yelling at people, hey, <laughs> your mask is down. No, he's very, very kind cool. about it, but he's very diligent as well. He's on top of it. I mean, you really, you know. Um, and then uh, the other thing that I forgot to mention is when the actors are on set, no, none of the other departments can come and work with them on set, even including wardrobe and makeup they would have to leave set first to be able to be checked like outside, things like that as well. Like when we're indoors, they have to have all the doors open. You know, it's like all of those things uh, to, to be um, very diligent with that stuff. And then like, let's say we need to adjust a light. Well, the actors would have to step off set first, be cleared, then the uh, electricians can come in, the, the uh, and grip department can come in and they can fix a light or whatever. But the really cool thing that Brad Rushing, our DP, 
thought about in all of this, and I thought it was genius, was they he decided to try and light from outside as much as possible. So bringing in light sources from outside, whether it's backlighting the actor from like, you know, it's sunlight or artificial sunlight coming through a window or however it was designed, he tried to design a lot of it uh, coming from outside and the lights that were inside were remote. So we had our uh, gaffers in our lighting department, they could adjust everything like on iPads and things like that. They were able to dim and do different things. They were able to do a lot without needing to physically go on set and have to remove the actors because that, of course, all takes extra time. So I thought that was pretty genius to, to approach it that way um, and help us keep our, keep our schedules, you know. Did, did you notice that you would tend to shoot outside more or no? I was just wondering if that was something. Part of that, that was you... part of the design, yeah. Oh, okay. uh, we did think about that early on with these protocols, try and limit the amount of scenes that need to be shot indoors. And again, you know, trying to keep it more open space. And when we did go into like a bedroom or something like that, the crew became very minimal. So uh, again, with the COVID officer, we worked with him to figure out, well, how many people can be upstairs safely? And it wasn't about like, <clears throat> How many people, you know, can we get in? We want to get in as many as we can. It was literally about like, what is a real safe, you know, like what's the real number? Can we only have five people up here? You can have two people in that room and you can have three people in this room. You know what I mean? So we kind of became that dance and then everybody else has to stay downstairs or outside, you know? So it was that thing. So there was a lot of things to juggle that you don't normally have to. Yes, they add time. The testing adds time to your, like actually takes away time from your shoot day. Um, so you have to account for all of those things. But what I will say is it sounds daunting. It sounds like, oh, this isn't going to work. Uh, but what I will say is that the, the crew and the new people, the, the, the people dealing with the COVID testing and all of that, we all got into a rhythm. You know, first couple days, obviously it's rougher, but we all got into a rhythm. And by the end, we were all just firing on all cylinders and you know, came, everybody came and got their tests that, you know, it just just you know we came together and we made it happen um and uh and everybody worked really hard you had to work hard because the other the other thing about it is we had less crew because you can't have too many people so that can put strain on the different departments like now they have one less or two less people than they normally have so again luckily we have a team of people that really aren't afraid of hard work and they put in the hard work and they all deserve all the accolades they can get because they really do put in a uh, tremendous amount of work. And that's why I keep working with the same team, I think, because we share that common goal of, you know, all trying to make something as good as we can, especially whether it's limited resources or time or, um, but they all just work really, really hard. And, and uh, I think we're able to accomplish really great things, uh, even in the, um, you know, uh, constraints of working in, during this time. Is the COVID officer someone you're hiring off Mandy or one of these sites, or is this someone from the state? That's a great question. I'm not qualified to answer. I don't know. Um, uh, the producers, they handled all of that. Um, it is definitely a, somebody who's certified within that. You know, I don't even know all the certifications, but they're... Uh, I, yeah, again, I don't really know, but I know that they are very, they're certified, they're, they're up with all the testing, like the latest test, like the, when we were filming, the tests were changing, and we had always the latest and greatest, the best, or whatever it was. Uh, we started, when we first showed up, we were doing blood tests, and then it became, uh, we were doing the finger prick stuff at the beginning, and then that morphed into just doing the nose swabs, and then there was different levels of nose swabs, and you know, like it was very interesting, but they're always at the like forefront of whatever it is that's going to be the best, have the highest accuracy, you know, all those things. Um, and uh, yeah, it was very, very interesting. And, and uh, that whole team, so not just himself, but there's a whole team behind it. They all were wonderful. And, and obviously uh, their job was to try and keep us safe. Um, and, you know, luckily they did. <laughs> What about crew feed? How is that done? Because, you know, normally it's going to be yeah, like a buffet all, style. That that all changed too, yeah. So uh, everything is kind of individually packaged. So, and, and we have caterers and stuff like that that, that um, 
craft services was very definitely very different. So everything has to be individually wrapped. Uh, you're not you can't go through and thumb through and touch a bunch of stuff. You have to figure out what you're going to choose. <laughs> that bag of Fritos. Now that you touch that bag, it's your bag. You know that kind of thing. Um, but the the probably the biggest bummer is like I always like to have like fresh fruit and stuff like that. They can't really do that um, uh, with these protocols. So unfortunately, unless you brought it your own in your own bag, you know, which I did. I brought bananas and apples of, of myself. Um, but uh, yeah, that was very different. And again, the lunches are very different. You could only have, everybody was spaced out, like this, you know, the seating area. You can't have everybody bunched in and always outside, basically. Um, and, um, but yeah, the, the lunches, uh, and the meals were all just kind of like in their own little, kind of package, you know, individual portions and packaged and, and it was fine. It, you know, it was, uh, uh, it just became, you know, kind of standard after the first week we, everybody was used to it. What was the shooting schedule? Uh, so the shooting schedule was, um, uh, we usually do like five on two off type of thing. And I think we had one six day, uh, maybe we had two. Um, we really, it was it was a pretty short schedule. That's the other, uh, I think, reason why we got approved so early on is it was a limited amount of days. So that's another thing that they were looking for. Like, you know, what's the shortest amount of time you can film this in to to limit, uh, you know, uh, you know, risk of somebody getting infected. So um, I think we had about 15 days uh, for this shoot, all in, like all together, which is not a lot of time <laughs> to film a movie. But again, like I said, we have a great crew that helps us um, accomplish those goals. What was the last day of shooting? And then I'm not sure again what the day for deliverables was. I think in October. How much yeah, time gosh, did you I'd have? Yeah, gosh, I have to look when the when the last day of shooting was. Um, I think we were just about um, just rolled over into August, or just right before um, August. I can't remember exactly the date. But yeah, from that time to getting it delivered, you know, was was we usually have twice that amount of time to get it done. However many months that is, what is that? Uh, it's basically the end of October is when we had to deliver, um, if my memory is serving me correctly. And uh, so not only we, so the good thing was is that the editor had started the process while we were filming. So as we were still filming, as they got footage delivered to them on hard drives through the mail um, or couriers. They would get the footage. Uh, Brett Headland was the, the editor. He would get it and then process it and then start cutting the scenes. So um, that was all happening. You know, it's offset by obviously a few days, um, but then once he gets rolling, he's just, you know, getting the new footage and continuing to try and put the, the pieces together. And uh, by the time we finished shooting, it wasn't far after that that we had the first rough cut. Um, and so, and then I, once I was finished filming, I got to look at the cuts and start, and we break it up in reels. So I started reviewing the reels, giving my notes, figuring out what tweaks we can do, or if we're missing a piece, you know, how, do, how are we gonna solve that? And um, so from the editing, just getting the, the picture cut, then to the sound design, to the score, I mean, uh, uh, Jamie Christopherson, who did our score, he had such a small amount of time to do the score. I was blown away at, with the speed at which he was able to do it. And we had several original songs in there that he produced, along with uh, Caitlin Epperly, who is in the movie, but she also sings several original songs for it. And while we were filming, he had to be helping create those like rough versions for her to perform and lip sync live to uh, while we were filming it. But that meant those songs had to be done. And so that whole decision that she, we were gonna do these original songs and you know, from that time to filming, those actual scenes was so short amount of time. I was blown away he was able to do it. And of course they were rough versions of the song, but they still sounded fantastic. Of course, they went in. They did. They even re-recorded some of the vocals and did things after the fact. But to to get that, and, and we had to have her go and record her audio for it. And so it was this this uh, pretty amazing dance that happened. But but it all worked out beautifully. And um, uh, 
then getting people in ADR, which was really interesting because um, we couldn't bring everybody in. Like, like even for myself, I didn't go into the studio for the ADR. I did it from home, and so did a lot of our actors. They didn't go to the studio either. They were either abroad or some of them were in their hotel rooms doing ADR for us, you know. We'd either send a microphone or, or you know, somehow get it that way. And uh, it was really, really interesting. I'd never experienced anything like that. But from, from doing it like that, all remote, to even the color correction sessions remotely, all doing it over Zoom, and now we've all got a much shorter time to do it. It was a, incredibly challenging, but again, everybody just right, rose to the challenge. And I think that's a lot of, of, you know, the positive stories out of 2020 that I've seen is people rising to challenges. And it's really, to me, it's inspirational. Obviously, I try and look at the glass half full versus empty. That's just my personality, but um, I really have seen some amazing things come out of this year of such tragedy and obviously so many uh, hardships and, and so much that has gone wrong in this year. I've seen how people have risen to that challenge and just it's been inspirational in that respect. Do you think it reminds you of, of how you do things? Because I could see you always wanting <laughs> to problem solve yeah. and fix it and, yeah. and, and being successful at that. Yeah, I, that I think like there's probably at some level there there is me seeing... Uh, you know, people maybe problem solve in, in the way that makes sense to me. <laughs> so yeah. maybe maybe that's what uh, uh, attracts me to, to, to seeing that. But um, uh, yeah, I, I certainly think my, uh, again, I go back to my martial arts. I think martial arts itself, at least what I have been able to study and the teachers that I've been lucky enough to, to train under is it's all about problem solving. So it, that's 100% of what it is, um, you know, whether you're fighting an opponent or not, or nothing confrontational, because martial arts, again, from what the way I've been taught, is it goes much beyond combat. There, there is that aspect of it. There is self-defense. There is the sport element of it. But beyond that, it's, it's kind of philosophy and problem solving, and it helps you in all walks of life, and I think it certainly has helped me in filmmaking. Sean, how do you feel about you filmed this movie in July of 2020? It's now mid-December 2020, and today it's the first day it's on Netflix. Um, I have to say it's actually a really good feeling um, because a lot of times in filmmaking, uh, as you guys probably well know, um, it can take a long time from inception to, to release, uh, in some cases years, and that's certainly been the case uh, for a lot of my movies. Um, some of them are three plus years before they end up uh, coming out. And even big blockbuster movies, they have similar tales. Some of them are three plus years. Um, other movies kind of get shelved for a while. It could be five years before they come out. So to have something that you work on within the same year, and it, I mean even like basically a, less than six months, uh, kind of go from inception to release, it's, it feels great. <laughs> it's really nice to see something uh, and, and hopefully get a good response. And with, Just today it's released, but I've already gotten really, really nice and, and sweet responses. And, and uh, that's just a, an amazing feeling and uh, a feeling that I hope any creator gets to uh, experience at some point. Um, because the, I, I also remember every inch of the set and every second, every minute of, of that production because it's still so fresh in my brain. And to go from that to seeing people's reactions to it this quickly, it's a, it's a, it's kind of, you know, endorphin inducing feeling. It feels really wonderful. I had a great morning waking up to uh, getting some of those messages and um, with some of the other movies, it's been like three years. It's really hard to remember you know, I remember certain moments, but it's obviously not the same thing. It's it's been a long time uh, since uh, you know working on those projects.